It is a tale as old as time, this Chevy versus Ford one. And today, we are writing a new chapter of it. We're putting the Ford Ranger Raptor up against the Chevy Colorado ZR2 and seeing which one is the better off-roader. So real quick, this Ranger Raptor is obviously the Raptorified version of the Ranger. It comes with a three liter V6 that you will not find anywhere else in the Ranger range. It has 405 horsepower, 430 pound-feet of torque, and a bunch of other off-road hardware like bash plates and 2.5 inch Fox shocks and trailing arm rear suspension with Wattslink. So that'll be really good for all of the desert running that you inevitably do. But this ZR2, Jason, what are we looking at here? The Colorado ZR2 is Chevy's entry into the midsize off-road space. This truck comes powered by a high output 2.7 liter four cylinder engine that makes 310 horsepower and 430 pound feet of torque. It's got a host of steel bash plates, steel rock rails on the sides, Multimatic DSSV dampers at all four corners, front and rear locking differentials, and 33 inch Goodyear tires. It is ready for whatever the wilds could throw at it. So, speaking of the wilds, Let's go hit them. Let's hit those trails and see what these things are capable of. Like with any good comparison, we first have to establish a rubric. In this case, we're looking for the truck that's the best all-around off-roader, meaning one that's most realistic for situations people would find themselves in and is easiest to live with. Sure, you can crawl over boulders and fly along a high-speed desert trail, but how do these trucks balance all those intended functions while also being reasonable to own? To get answers, we took both the Ranger Raptor and Colorado ZR2 off-road and onto some of the trails in beautiful Southern Utah. We subjected both of them to the kind of terrain we thought would be most like what the average buyer would have access to. Well, right off the bat, sitting in the passenger seat of the Colorado ZR2, I already like how much smaller it is on the trail. Like I've gone off-roading in the Silverado ZR2 and that was just too much truck for most trails, I think. And it wasn't even a tiny trail. It was a reasonably sized trail. This one was smaller than the one I was on. And can you imagine a much bigger truck out here? The size is already much more agreeable in my opinion. So we're going out on the trails, I, you want to look for the suspension how it articulates the wheel travel, how controlled everything is. It's all about control. You don't want to be going too wild with with anything. Yeah, the, the thing that I understand with something like this is it is as much a precision activity as it is driving 150 miles an hour on a racetrack. And when you bring a tool like the Colorado ZR2 to the trail, it opens up a lot more options for where you can go with the high ground clearance, the great approach and departure angles, you won't get hung up on your front or rear bumpers trying to climb rocks. And with good tires, they keep you moving forward even if the ground is sloppy or, or sandy. Wet. Wet, mud, snow. So the, the better equipped you can be for those situations, the better off you are. And the ZR2 having front and rear locking differentials can get you through just about anything. And to lock those differentials, it is just a touch of a button. Right? Yeah, in the ZR2, they are a dash mounted button right below the Yeah, HVAC, right there. Right, right within reach of the driver. Yeah, if you nope. once you're used to the truck, you just rely on your muscle memory. You just reach down and touch it. What I also like right now is how quiet it is in here. The engine is working clearly, but you and I can carry on conversation at normal volume and it doesn't sound like it's straining at all. And I think that's the that's the beauty of this, this 27 engine. Yeah, it makes 430 pound feet of torque and it does it very low in the RPM range. So it's really good at just crawling along. Yeah, because right now you're at a thousand, hovering between a thousand, two thousand. Yeah, about 1500 RPM. We're just creeping along through the woods. Seems like you're able to place it very well too. Yeah, it, the ZR2 is really the right size for the trail. One thing that I do like about this truck, and it started as a point of frustration for me, I was genuinely upset to see that there were no running boards because I am very short and this truck is very tall. However, I like that it has rock rails. That to me signals some commitment to the terrain. So there, 
I could see where horsepower would be resulting in a different experience. Yeah. Like this kind of thing is Raptor territory. Yeah, the, the smooth go fast. Smooth hill fast. And out in the wide open desert. If you're trying mm -hmm. to keep it on top of the terrain, yes, the power helps. But with nine inches of wheel travel, there's not a lot you can get up on top of without things going real sideways real fast. After getting a feel of the ZR2, we hopped out and took the Ford for a spin. We've been waiting a long time for a Ranger Raptor. We've been waiting so long. The version that other people got in other parts of the world was a diesel. It was, it was. yes. They got a diesel version in Australia. Not what we have. So we are in Baja mode right now, which is, you know, the whole Raptor thing. High speed desert running over rumid -er trails than what we were just on in the ZR2. The steering is heavier though. Because I was driving the ZR2 earlier, I will say there's one ding against it is the steering is a little light for my liking and the steering here is nice and tight. However, with some electronically assisted systems, you can kind of make them weighty however you want. So it's like... Yeah, it's nice that Ford gives the option of different steering weights through the, the button that's on the steering wheel or the different drive modes. Oh man, so speaking of the drive modes, there are some, but they're accessible through this dial, which is nice, but if you want to, I don't know, mess with the, the, the differentials or anything, it becomes a touchscreen exercise. It's not just a simple, don't look, reach, hit button. You have to interact with the screen. Yeah, when you're off-road on the trail, the last thing you want to do is have to get three menus deep into an electronic screen to try and find the button to actuate the item that you want. In this case, the front locking differential. Or if you think you've hit the correct part of the screen and then you keep your eyes on the road because that's where all of the stuff is and you look back down, you realize your command was not obeyed because, I don't know, didn't touch the right part of the screen or something. It can be frustrating. Speaking of the screen, both of these trucks have great cameras for useful for off-roading, forward view, side views and, and whatnot. But the Raptor's vertically oriented screen leaves less real estate for that camera view it makes it more difficult to see what's in front of you than in the ZR2. But you can put this in two-wheel drive and what is it, two high? Yes, yeah, so you can put the, the Raptor in two high in Baja mode with the traction and stability controls completely turned off and you can hoon it to your heart's desire. Which I will not be doing today because I am rather attached to being alive, but we're telling you that it is a possibility. In addition to having more horsepower than the ZR2, the selectable exhaust modes in the Ranger Raptor make it just sound wicked off-road. Yeah, it does. Can you imagine you're standing out there somewhere and you hear this like growly thing coming at you? It's very signature, much like all of the decals all over this truck. I thought when I drove this, I liked the brakes. Actually, the brakes I thought were very nice. I thought the pedal responded very proportionately with brake bite, which is important out there. If you're rock crawling and doing all kinds of low traction type stuff. It matters. Yeah. Confident braking is very important when you're going fast off road. Yeah, the Ranger Raptor is a lot more trail friendly than its larger F 150 Raptor kin. But when we were uh, we were hauling it uphill in the ZR2, by hauling I mean hauling ass, that was a situation where I imagine the extra horsepower of the Raptor would have been more useful. So I think even just today that we've been driving around, uh, the personalities are becoming clear. Like both of them will do the slower trails well. It seems like the Raptor is more tuned for high-speed desert running. And you know, that's that's the whole thing is like Ford goes into Baja 1000. That's the thing that they can hang their hats on. Uh, so yeah, that, that would make sense. And you know, we were walking around it earlier and you made that really great point about how they lifted the truck, but they left the, the tailpipes yeah. kind of low. Ford gave us great high clearance rear bumper on the Ranger Raptor and then stuck the exhaust pipes in the open space. So you lose any benefit from the high clearance bumper. Do you think that's something that could be fixed in the aftermarket? Absolutely. Yeah, but then there's an extra thing that you have to do 
to your truck. And then you have to buy a new exhaust to cut off the tips, and this Ford could have fixed it easily from the factory. Mm. Like Chevy has done on their full-size ZR2 line with the high clearance, high cut. It's true. Pipes. You look under that thing. It's an tail pipe, unless you really look for them. The 10 speed in the Raptor, I didn't think was intrusive at all. It kind of hung revs back there a little bit, but in all of the off-roading that I've been doing, I haven't really found it to be distracting or a problem at all. Yeah, Ford's tuning with their 10-speed transmissions has been pretty spot on over the years. Mm -hmm. And the two, the transmission tuning and the different drive modes really helps in holding the gear that the truck needs and wants to be in. So we have spent all weekend climbing around, going off-roading in the ZR2 and the Raptor. What did you like about the ZR2? ZR2 is just a great all-around off-road truck. It's great power, good traction, the suspension works well. It's just very refined. It's an elegant off-road truck. The word I would usually apply to off-roading, but I can see your point, that's a good one. So whereas the Raptor, also very, very capable, unflappable even, I would say, especially in the higher speed stuff, I think the Raptor's true colors come through when the trail is not as rocky and technical, but it is a little more groomed and you can really open it up, especially throw its ass out when you're in Baja mode. That is super fun. But otherwise, it will do everything that you ask it to. You can make it climb rocks or just go down a dirt trail. There'll be no complaints. But we do have to pick one winner. And after much deliberation, we have decided that the ZR2 is the better all-around mid-size pickup off-roader. The Ranger Raptor plays to the Raptor crowd. It's a lot of brash, thrash, crash, and flash. Like, it's just, it's loud, it screams at you. It's just fun. The theater aspect of it is really great, but if you are looking for something that is technically good at many more things, the ZR2 is your bet. And also, I think, realistically, how many people have wide open desert spaces to run available to them regularly? Not many, right? It's a small portion of the population. Small portion, very noisy portion of the population, but still small. For, for people, you know, who have lives and just need a truck that they can also daily, the ZR2 is the one. If you would so kindly head to motortrend.com, Jason will have written a very extensive and good comparison test about the two, which you should absolutely check out. And yeah, until then, friends.